Hi everyone, this is your global gourmet chef Susie G. That's G as in goddess of my kitchen. I'm here welcoming you to a special episode of Hey You Dumpling. Everyone everywhere in our world has the basic concept of taking some kind of meat and surrounding it with some kind of a starch, whether it's fried, baked, or steamed and giving it some kind of a dumpling type of a name, you know. Even though the language and the variations of spices may be different, in essence, we human beings are more alike than different. So, when we look around the world for different kinds of dumplings, everyone has a version. In Greece, for example, we have the spanakopita, okay. They're triangle parcels filled with spinach and feta cheese. In Russia, we have the knish or we have the piroshki. In Lebanon and all throughout the Holy Land, we have fatayer, which is similar in the dumpling concept. In Poland, we have the pierogi. In China, we have the shrimp hagao, which is steamed. In India and Pakistan, we have the samosa, which can be filled with meat called kima samosa or you can have a vegetarian version with meat and potatoes. In Latin America in Spain we have something called the empanada that's either baked or fried and has pork filling or can be beef. So today I'm going to make for you my global gourmet version of the meat dumpling taken from inspirations from all over the world and it's using organic ground beef extra lean and baked you know not everything in the world that's delicious has to be fried yesterday I was just coming out of a salon and I saw a lady with some fried hair I thought to myself oh my goodness somebody lied to you wow what the foe Okay, so before we start making our dumplings, I'd like to share with you something I like to sip on when I'm cooking in the kitchen, and it's called Susie G's Stevia Soda. Stevia is an all-natural, zero-calorie sweetener from South America, and you can get it at any health store. And what I like to do is make my own natural soda, and it's uh, using sparkling water, lemons, limes, Today I'm just going to use two limes and um, the juice of the limes are so good for your body, it's actually alkalinizing. And the sparkling water is water and the stevia is sweet. So it's so wonderful and it's zero calories and um, just like we shower on the outside, we need to shower on the inside. So this is a fun way to sip on some fizzy natural soda. So I take two limes and I juice it. Make sure when you shop for limes in the grocery store, not to get the ones, kind of hold it in your hand and make sure they're not wrinkly, they're firm and they, the skin seems not so dimply, kind of thin. They t tend to hold more juice. So I put my lime juice in there and I like to add, it's sweeter than sugar, so I've discovered two dropfuls are pretty good for me. Put two dropfuls of liquid stevia and then I add my natural sparkling water. You can add ice to this. Sometimes I like to add watermelon juice. It can be creative. Mmm, look at that. It's such a nice alternative to regular soda. And it's natural and it's delicious. Mmm, fizzy and fabulous. Now I'm ready to start my dumplings. Okay, to get started on our dumplings, first I'm going to make my dough. So I'm going to start out with three cups of unbleached flour. And 
put it into a bowl. I add one teaspoon of salt and I add one teaspoon of baking powder. My recipe also calls for one teaspoon of brown sugar and if I don't have any around I like to use a packet of stevia because it's just as sweet as sugar and it works just as well and it's zero calories so add a packet of stevia and I mix all the dry ingredients thoroughly so the baking powder incorporates into the flour and the salt and the stevia get all mixed in. Now once that's done I take a stick of butter room temperature, it's been sitting about an hour, room temperature, and I cut it into my dough, the start of my dough, like so. I like to find organic butter. Some of that European type of butter is really nice and rich. I also found a nice Amish butter that's very flavorful too. Some of your local artisans have some really nice stuff. And then I take a nice organic egg and whisk it and add that in. And I take one cup of warm milk. my dough. And I use a spoon and I mix until everything is really nicely incorporated. Like so. Once everything gets kind of mixed in really nicely, you can just Use your clean hands and just mix it even more so that everything is nicely incorporated. Like so. So as I'm mixing, I mean, you know, don't forget, don't don't be scared to just get in there and get your feet. Uh, fist into the dough to get it nicely mixed in and incorporated, you know. And if it gets still a little sticky, some flowers are a little different, you can always have a little flour nearby and add a little more as you get a... There you go. So, shouldn't stick to the bowl. Should be nice and incorporated and mixed. There we go. Nice and pliable dough. It's coming together. And it's looking really nice for empanadas or dumplings. Getting it nicely incorporated. It's great when you get angry at someone. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. Get your stresses hey, out. Hey, if you had a bad day, you know, boom, boom. You can really make some good dough. I have a friend who loves to make bread because, you know, she that's her exercise. We <laughs> relieve tension from work. You know when the dough is ready, when it's not too sticky, and ready to be worked. Now that our dough is nicely and thoroughly mixed, it's not sticky to the bowl, and everything's incorporated, I like to work on my surface, sprinkle out some extra flour, and we're going to roll out the dough. So, place my dough here. All right, get it nicely incorporated, flattened out, like so. This is the fun part. Okay. We're going to make our circle that looked really nice. All right, I'm going to take a really nice, I like to invest in a nice rolling pin. The heavier, the better, the less work on your wrists and your hands. So. And roll out our dough, dumpling dough, 
like so. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Look at that. <laughs> it's kind of like making pizza, but we're not making pizza. <laughs> so you want to get it nice and rolled out. And oh, you got a little piece of parsley there. So we're just going to take that out. How did that get there? The fun thing about cooking is all the surprises. Cooking is chemistry, just like between people. Okay. All right, you want the good chemistry. So we want to roll it out like so. So it's not too paper thin, but it's thin enough. About a quarter of an inch. All right, now that I've rolled out my dough, I take a nice round cookie cutter. This is one of my favorite ones because it has a nice sharp edge. Or uh, I've used a nice uh, lid of a jar, works really well. It's a nice shape because I'm going to be folding them in half and I cut my circles like so. There's one, two, I've got to kind of eye this, three, Four, I think we can get a, a lot. Five, six, seven, ooh, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow, cool. We got eleven dumplings dough circles. So, what I like to do is I like to sprinkle. I'm going to leave this on a tray. We're going to keep our dumpling circles like so on the tray to sit and rest because we're going to be making our filling. And what do we do with this? We reuse it. Reuse, reduce, recycle our dough. So we put it back together into another ball like so. Mix it nice and round so we get a couple more circles out of here. And I'm going to take a nice clean kitchen cloth and cover it on top to set aside so we can make our filling for our dumplings. Now we're ready to make our filling for our dumpling. I like to take one pound of organic lean beef. That smells good already. And I haven't even put in the seasoning. Okay. Let that start to cook. While that's starting to saute, I like to chop two onions. Cooking is really about layering flavor. So I always like to add garlic and onion and spices just so nicely. Okay. I like to chop my onion really finely. Now I'm using really large onions. So I might not use two, but uh, every time I've used more than two, it works out just fine. So I wouldn't worry about getting it just perfectly. So while the beef is cooking, I'm going to add your onions to this. Since the onion's really big, I'm going to just stick to one. So it's two medium small onions or one really large. And that looks just right. 